emotional damage. Germany, four time World Cup winners, the most successful European country at the tournament, and the second overall behind only Brazil with five. Most finishes in the top two, most finishes in the top three, most finishes in the top four. We could go all day with the records. A powerhouse when it comes to international football. Lotto Mateus, Franz Beckenbauer, Rodi Voller, Oliver Kahn, Joachim Lowe, all legends in their fields for the Germans. To date, Germany have scored well over 200 goals at the World Cup, boasting some incredibly prolific strikers. In the top 20 list of all-time FIFA World Cup goal scorers, German players appear seven times. Jad Muller, Thomas Muller, Zeller, Rummenigge, Rahn, Klinsmann, and none other than Miroslav Klose. Miroslav Klose, the record holder for the most FIFA World Cup goals, 16, 71 goals in total in 137 appearances for the national team, 24 of those appearances in the World Cup at four different tournaments. But how did he manage this? How did he become the tournament's leading marksman? How legendary was Miroslav Klose at the FIFA World Cup? Welcome to Football Reminisce, and this is the World Cup story of one of Germany's greatest ever strikers. Klose made his debut for Germany in 2001 at the age of 22 while playing for FC Kaiserslautern against Albania in a 2002 World Cup qualifier. He came on as a 73rd minute sub and scored the winning goal with two minutes remaining. He repeated that feat against Greece just four days later, coming on in the 67th minute and notching up the winner. He scored two hat-tricks against Israel and Austria in friendly matches building up to the 2002 World Cup and with that cemented a starting spot in Germany's forward line. He did not take too long to open his World Cup account, heading in Balak's low cross in the 20th minute. Five minutes later, he made it two from yet another Balak cross. He completed his hat-trick in the 70th minute. First game, treble, not a bad start. Incredibly, all three of those goals were headers. Germany went on to beat Saudi Arabia 8-0 in that match, their biggest ever win at the tournament. This should have been a sign. He opened the scoring in the next group game against Ireland, once again from a header. And oh look, it's Michael Balak with another assist. He got his fifth goal in the last group game against Cameroon. You guessed it, another header. And oh, look, it's Michael Balak with yet another assist. By this point, the golden boot was a real possibility. Unfortunately, he didn't score a single goal in the knockout stage as Germany lost 2-0 to Brazil and the eventual top scorer Ronaldo in the final. Five goals, the silver shoe and the silver medal on his debut World Cup. Next up, the 2006 edition, host country, Klose's Germany. Heading into the World Cup, Klose had an amazing campaign at his club, winning the 2005-2006 Bundesliga top scorer and also being named player of the season after scoring 25 goals. First group match, Costa Rica, June 9th, Klose's birthday. He didn't waste any time to open his account for this tournament neither, scoring after just 17 minutes, quicker than in the previous World Cup, to give Germany a 2-1 lead. He completed his brace in the second half, making it 3-1. Scoring on his birthday while Germany was hosting the World Cup sounds perfect. That double took him ahead of Mateus, Halle and Moloch on the goal scorers list for the World Cup. Germany beat Poland 1-0 in the next group stage match, but it wasn't closer with the goal this time. I mean, Poland is his home country, so maybe he didn't want to score against them. He scored after only four minutes in the next match against Ecuador, his quickest ever World Cup strike. He completed yet another brace, rounding the goalkeeper to make it 2-0 right before halftime. And oh look, it's Michael Balak with another assist. 
This was Klose's ninth World Cup goal, taking him ahead of Schaffer and Vola, and equal with Rummenigge and Zeller. He failed to score in the round of 16 win against Sweden, but that doesn't tell the full story. For the first goal, Klose went in between two defenders before the Swedish goalkeeper Isaksson made a save right on Klose's feet. Podolski then scored from the rebound, and for the second goal, he dragged three defenders across the edge of the box before coolly setting up Podolski's second of the game. Up to this point, all of Klose's nine goals had been in the group stage matches. All World Cup games are big, but according to some articles, he still needed to prove himself in the knockout rounds. Next up for Germany, a quarterfinal clash against Argentina. Both teams had scored 10 goals and conceded two up to this point. By far their toughest opposition so far. You could throw the memories of 1986 and 1990 in as well. This would be the perfect time for Klose to score his first knockout goal and send his country to the semis. Argentina took the lead right after halftime and held on to the lead all the way to the 80th minute. It was looking unlikely and Germany was staring quarterfinal elimination in their backyard. Up step Miroslav Klose, heading in an 80th minute equalizer to rescue Germany and send the game to extra time and eventually to penalties where the hosts won. His 10th World Cup goal, the 12th player to achieve that, he was now level with run on World Cup goals for Germany. Only his current manager at the time, Jürgen Klinsmann and Jad Muller had scored more. Italy were Germany's semi-final opponents. The Azzurri had only conceded one goal in the tournament. That goal was an own goal, so their defense was airtight. Unfortunately, Germany and Klose found out the hard way as they failed to score in the 120 minutes. Klose himself was subbed during that extra time period. Italy scored two goals in the last two minutes of extra time to book their ticket to the final. The third place playoff match was a Bastian Schweinsteiger show as Germany clinched the bronze medal. Klose finished on five goals which was enough to earn him the golden boot, two goals clear of anyone else. Ronaldo was one of the players tied on three and was now on 15 World Cup goals. Next up, South Africa for the 2010 edition. Heading into the 2006 World Cup, Klose had scored 31 goals for his club in all competitions. This time, he had scored only 6 goals in 38 appearances ahead of the 2010 World Cup. In addition to that, Mario Gomez, Lucas Podolski and young Thomas Muller were all forward options for Joachim Low. But this was Klose, World Cup Miroslav Klose. Just like in his first two tournaments, he scored in the opening match, just 26 minutes in, another header the seventh he had scored. In the next match against Serbia, he was shown two yellow cards and sent off in the first half. Germany went on to lose 1-0 and the striker missed the final group game against Ghana. They did pick up the win and top their group. He returned to the side for the round of 16 tie against England and it only took him 20 minutes to score, outpacing and outstrengthening the three Lions defense. His 12th World Cup goal, only Jad Muller was ahead of him. Next up, Argentina, a repeat of the quarterfinal from 2006. As you may remember, that game went all the way to penalties. Not this time round though. Klose's two goals helped Germany to a convincing 4-0 route of the South Americans, his 13th and 14th strikes, becoming joint second in the all-time World Cup goal scorers list. The 13th goal? Probably the easiest he ever scored. He was now only one goal away from equaling Ronaldo's record of 15, with two games to go for him at the 2010 World Cup. Germany were paired against Spain in the semis, where they lost 1-0, once again falling at the semi-final hurdle. Klose didn't feature in the third place playoff as Germany secured another bronze, this time against Uruguay. Now 32, it was unlikely that he would feature at the next World Cup, but due to his experience, he was selected for that World Cup. Before the tournament started, he stated that he wanted one more shot at trying to win the World Cup. He didn't feature in the first game against Portugal as Thomas Muller was preferred. Muller did get a trouble in that match, so understandable. He was subbed on in the second group game against Ghana, the same opponents he hadn't featured against after his red card in 2010. He came on in the 69th minute and just two minutes later equalized for Germany, his 15th World Cup goal. He now needed one goal to break the record. Germany faced USA in the final group match, winning 1-0. But just like in 2002 against the North American opponents, Klauser didn't get on the score sheet. 
Algeria were Germany's round of 16 opponents. They had conceded in every single group game, a good chance for Klosser to get his record. Unfortunately, he did not play in that match as Germany progressed to the last eight. Klosser made his 22nd World Cup appearance in the quarterfinal match against France, although the goal still eluded him, with the only goal of the match coming from Matt Hamels early on in the first half. Miroslav Klosser was about to be involved in a massacre, semi-final against the host Brazil, a repeat of the 2002 final in Japan. A billion eyes watching him, two of those eyes, Ronaldo's, in the stadium commentating on the game. Of course, Klosser scored in that game to break Ronaldo's record, if you can still call it a game of course, and just to spare the Brazilian fans, we are not going to go into more detail on that one. Just like in 2006 and 2010, Germany faced Argentina, not in the quarterfinal this time though, this was the big one, just like in 1986 and 1990. Klose started in the final and played 88 minutes. As you may know, Mario Götze won it for the Germans in extra time. By the way, Götze replaced Klose in that match, so you might even say he gave him some of his goal-scoring powers. Finally, he had achieved it. 12 years after his first World Cup, he had finally achieved his goal. He retired from international football just one month later. So. That is how Miroslav Klose became the World Cup's leading marksman. That was a lot to take in, but that wasn't all. Goal scoring is not the only record he holds in that tournament. He is the only player with four consecutive World Cup medals, finishing third in 2006 and 2010, second in 2002, and first in 2014. He is also the only player to appear in four consecutive World Cup semi-finals. He holds the record for most headers scored in a single edition, achieving it on his debut World Cup with five. He is one of three players to score at least five goals in more than one World Cup. Kubeas did it for Peru in the 1970s, while his teammate Thomas Muller did it in the 2010s. He also won the Silver Shoe in 2002, the Golden Shoe in 2006, and was included in the team of the tournament for both of those editions. Legendary.